Toronto is well known for being the venomous snake capital of the world. But if you've ever called us the poisonous snake capital of the world in front of a reptile keeper, you've probably been hastily corrected and informed about the difference between a poisonous snake and a venomous snake. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what the difference actually is, whether it's all that important, and while these two categories fail to encompass the diverse range of ways that animals use different toxins. So stick around guys, this will hopefully be a very interesting video. So the definition of poison and venom that most reptile keepers and scientists prefer to use is that venom is injected through a bite or a sting by something like this death adder, whereas poison is ingested by something like a poisonous frog or a toad or something like that. Interestingly though, there are actually some snakes that do meet the scientific definition of poisonous. Things like garter snakes and some keelbacks have the ability to sequester toxins from their diet by eating things like toads and store these toxins in their body, making their flesh poisonous to eat. If that's not confusing enough, there are some snakes, like the tiger keelback of East and Southeast Asia, that are both venomous, whose bite can reduce your body's ability to clot blood and uh, cause internal and external bleeding, as well as being poisonous to eat, having sequestered toxins from a diet of toads over in Asia. So some snakes are venomous and poisonous. And it's not just the animals that can be one, the other, or both. When it comes to the actual toxins being either injected or ingested, sometimes the one toxin is used in a variety of ways. To trototoxin, for example, which is the toxin that makes pufferfish poisonous to eat, is the same toxin injected when you're bitten by a blue ring octopus. So an animal can be poisonous, venomous, or both, and a toxin can be a poison, a venom, or both. So it's pretty confusing stuff. On top of this, while of course the vast majority of snakes inject their venom when they bite to either defend themselves or to capture their prey, there is of course some snakes that don't need to inject their venom for self-defense, and that would be the spitting cobras. So it begs the question, if they're not injecting their venom when they're defending themselves, are they using it as venom? And if not, what do we call it? To tackle this missing part of the equation, scientists have come up with a third category called toxogenous, which is chemicals that are administered from a range. So they're neither injected nor ingested, but they are delivered from a distance away, such as the spitting cobra's venom, or that of a skunk or a bombardier beetle, animals that can shoot their toxins without having to come in physical contact with the other animal. So at the end of the day, if we want to be as accurate as possible, we really have to use the three of these categories. Poison for something that's ingested, venom that's injected by something like this scorpion here, and a toxingen uh, for something that's administered from a distance, like spitting cobra venom or something like this. But to somebody having a general conversation in everyday English, while it might not be as specific or as accurate to say a poisonous snake, for the last several hundred to a thousand years, the two words have been a synonym of one another, and even today, many of the leading dictionaries still use the words interchangeably. So if you were writing a scientific paper or talking to a herpetological club, you'd be pretty frowned upon to use the words in the wrong way. I don't think we should shove this information down people's throats when they use one word instead of the other on something like social media. The difference isn't as important as we make it out to be, but they are words that we can use to be as descriptive and as accurate as possible if we so choose. But that's the difference with the words. Poisonous, venomous, and toxogenous. And I hope you've learned something today and enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please leave us a thumbs up, a like, a comment, all that sort of stuff. And uh, check on back next week, guys, because there is lots more wildlife content coming. But between now and next week, be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.